In this lesson, we'll begin our project by sketching out the basic form of our staircase. All right, so we're at the beginning point of our project. And what we need to do is we need to get from level one to level two. So that means we're going to have to model in a staircase. But we're not going to take the route of modeling stairs how we've done in previous courses where we're just you know modeling in some of the basic out-of-box components that Revit has to offer. We're going to take a much more creative and customized approach. So in order to build this staircase, we're going to be sketching out some of the basic form. But we're also going to be applying some really customized elements and finishes to this staircase. So let's start out by getting our basic form in place. So I'm going to jump to level one. And I'm going to change the way my graphic is viewed here to my hidden line. And I can definitely see a, a difference in material. So I know that this top area here is going to be my mezzanine space, or level 2. And this area here is just below that level 1. So I know my start and stop points for my stairs. So we're at a really good spot. And as I mentioned, we're going to actually sketch out this stair system. So I'm going to go to Architecture tab here, and we're going to click on Stair. I'm not concerned with going to the drop-in. I'm simply going to click that button. And when I do, I'm not going to click anything else, but I'm going to focus my attention on this pen inside of my components because we're going to be sketching out our staircase in order to get these really unique forms. So I'll click on that pen. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch out the boundary. So we're going to make sure that is checked. And basically what the boundary is, you can look at it almost like the perimeter of your staircase or the form of your staircase. And you really get a good understanding of it in plan view. But when we're drawing out these boundaries, we're really just drawing out the stringers. You can look at it that way, what's going on on the left and right side of our stairs. So I'm going to make sure that's selected. And again, I wanted um, some nice, elegant curves. And I wanted the bottom of my stairs to be a little bit wider than when you reach the top to create a nice, elegant, sweeping look. So I'm going to go with this arc button. And again, I know the start and end point for my stairs. So we'll select this is my start point, And this will be my end point. And we'll just create a really nice curve here. Perfect. So now I want to create the exact same curve on the other side for my staircase. So I can try to sketch that out and try to match what I did here. Or I can simply just highlight that mirror by drawing axis. And now I'm going to try to locate a midpoint somewhere within my project. There we go. And I'm simply going to draw that axis in. And when I do, I get the exact same curve on this side in the exact same location, which is exactly what we want. So we're not done yet. So now that we have our stringers or our boundaries in place, I'm not going to hit the green check mark, but I am going to click on riser. So now we're basically going to, you can look at it as sketching in our treads and plan view, but Revit considers it the risers. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to draw my first one and then I'm going to offset the rest of them. So I'm going to start here on the bottom with the first one that I draw out clicking from that point to this point. And it's really important that when you're drawing out your risers, that those lines either touch or intersect our left and right side here, our boundaries. If they don't, Revit won't allow us to finish out this function when we click that green check mark. So I know that the bottom is going to be the widest. So as I offset the rest of these, I'm not going to have any problem with uh, that line touching or intersecting. It's going to do exactly what it needs to do. So I'm going to click on that line, click offset, and again, my tread depth is going to be at least 11 inches. I'm going to put that distance in there. Make sure we have a riser in there. And now I'm simply going to offset the rest of these lines. And you'll notice as I place these, Revit is letting me know how many risers I've created and how many I have remaining. So if you add these two numbers together, basically that's telling me, hey, to get from level one to level two, it's going to be 18 stairs. And in my design, I want to go up halfway I want my landing to be at the halfway point of my stair and then I want to finish it off after that landing so I need to create nine stairs for my first run put a landing in place and later on we'll finish out the last of those nine stairs so we have three made right or created right now let's fit it let's finish out the rest of these six and we'll stop when we get to nine perfect and we have one more to create and again you'll notice these lines are either touching like I hear on the bottom or they're intersecting our boundary. So now I can hit the green check mark and Revit just automatically modeled out our stairs for us in the form that I wanted. So if you wanted to create something a little more elaborate than this, maybe you wanted to have your stairs more curving down here at the bottom, you can do so in the exact same way we did these uh, boundaries here. So now let's jump to 3D view to make sure our stairs 
are in the right direction. And they are because we're wanting to go from level one to level two, so I need to be sloping up. And occasionally when you're working uh, with sketching out these stairs, it might not be in the right orientation. So all you really need to do is highlight that stair. And here on your top right, you can click flip, and it'll automatically flip that stair in the right direction for you. So I'm going to go back to level one. And before I hit the green check mark, we're now going to finish out our landing. So I'm going to click landing. And we're going to sketch that out as well. But this time, I'm going to use a rectangular tool to get that done. And it's really important that we pay close attention to where we're selecting the start and end points. So when I'm placing my landing here, I want to make sure that I'm placing it, my first corner, to align with what's going on on the inside face of this structure. Had I put it out here, we'd have actually have the outside face here. We end up with a nice or a little jog. Uh, and then we'll have the outside face of the new structure or the new landing. And I don't want that. I want to have a nice, clean, sweeping curve for mine. So I'm going to start my point here on the inside face of that. That way my structure lines up the best that I can get it. And I want the depth of my landing to be about 5 feet. So I'm going to drag this until my dimension reads 5 feet. And once I get to that point, I'll click. And I'm going to scroll in just a little bit further here to make sure that my corner here is touching the corner here. And I'm going to type in TL real quick to thin those lines out. It's going to help me. Uh, get much more accurate placement of my line. So I'm going to select that one. We're going to move this one. And we just want those that corner to touch. So now what we can do is we can hit the green check mark. And I can jump to 3D view really quick to make sure everything's looking good. So, so far, so good. Now I'm going to hit the green check mark one more time. And my rails should be popped in here. Perfect. So now that my rails are in, I can kind of orbit around. We're in good shape at this point, but we're not going to use these rails. Um, we're going to use as much customized uh, components and details as we can. So I'm simply going to highlight those rails, red, red X that, and get those out of there. So now we have a nice beginning form for our staircase. Now we're not going to finish out going from the landing to level two because once we get our custom railing in place it's going to make it's going to make it really challenging trying to get those railings to fit in. So doing it in this order is going to make it much easier to accomplish getting our rails and our posts and newels in the right place. So in the next lesson um, we'll start working on a customized baluster that we can load into this project. So I'll see you in the next lesson.